Hey friends, it's Holly from Chic Antique and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making over a nightstand I found on Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to teach you how to make vintage furniture more modern and more chic. So if you're excited for this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get started. All right, friends, here's the piece we're going to be working on today. It is a little nightstand I found on Facebook Marketplace. As you can see, she's had a long, hard life. She's pretty beat up. She has some damage. She's pretty rough around the edges, but that's okay. We're going to work our magic on her and fix her up. going to start as we always do by first removing the hardware before we go ahead and clean the piece. I do want to clean this piece inside and out so I'm removing the drawers before we get started. Next for cleaning, we're going to be using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. I'm going to mix a couple teaspoons of this with some warm water and clean the entire piece using a microfiber rag. And make sure you always wear gloves with this because this is a TSP cleaner, so you don't want it absorbing into your skin. This one was super dirty, as you can see from the water, it is very brown. This is why you wanna clean your pieces very, very well before you get started, so that your paint sticks to the piece and not to the dirt. Now I'm just gonna be rinsing that cleaner off using clean, clear water in a rag. And the veneer on the sides of this piece did need a little bit of repairs, so I'm going to go in with tight bond wood glue and this little syringe to make those repairs. And I'm just wiping away the excess with a wet rag and then I'm going to be using a couple clamps just to hold that down while it dries. And I apologize, my hand was kind of in the way for this portion, but I'm just lifting up those little edges of damaged veneer and then gluing those down. Wiping away the excess with a wet rag and then clamping everything down with some clamps. And last repair, this corner has a crack in it, so I'm going to be doing the same thing, applying that glue with a syringe and then clamping it down while it dries. Now I'm coming in with Bondo's all-purpose putty to fill in any gaps between the veneer. I'm mixing one part of the filler to cream hardener and mixing that up really well. Then I'm going to go ahead and start applying it. Thank you. 
Now after that's all dry, I'm coming back with my orbital sander using 120 grit sandpaper and not only smoothing out that wood filler, but I'm smoothing out any damage on the rest of the piece. And on this edge piece here, I'm going all the way down to bare wood because there was a significant amount of damage. So we do want to start with a clean canvas wherever we can. Now moving on to the top of the piece, I'm continuing with that 120 grit sandpaper and removing the previous finish as well as any scratches or damage to the finish. This is sped up a ton but I did take my time to prevent swirls and to keep it as smooth as possible. After sanding the body, now it's time to sand the drawers. So I'm just continuing sanding. And for the drawers, there was a little bit of damage and I wanted to make these look like new. So not only am I sanding the fronts, but I'm also sanding the inside as well as the sides of the drawers, just so we can bring that old wood back to life. Now to smooth everything out, I'm coming back with 220 grit sandpaper on my sanding block to smooth everything out and prepare for primer. Now sanding the drawers with that same 220 grit sandpaper as well as the inside of the drawers as well. Now after the sanding, I want to remove all that dust. So I'm going to start with a microfiber cloth. And then after that, I will remove any remaining dust with a tack cloth. Now I'm going to be priming this piece using Dixie Belle's Boss. It's going to block in odors and stains. Make sure to mix it up before you get started. And I'll be using my Zebra Chiseled Wedge Brush to apply this. I am going with a little bit of a lighter color on this nightstand. And since you can see there is a little bit of warmth in that wood, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm guessing it's maple. Um, I don't want any bleed through into my paint. So I'm using this primer to prevent any bleed through as well as seal in all that wood that I sanded. And now moving on to the drawers, just showing you what that looks like. There are several different colors of this primer available. I'm using clear because that's just what I had, but Dixie Belle also has a white version and a gray version. 
Now moving on to paint, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Driftwood. I'll be keeping my spray bottle handy and I'll be painting using my Zebra Chiseled Wedge Brush. You do want to make sure to mix up your paint really well to get all of those minerals and pigments mixed up before you get started. It can tend to separate, so this is what you want it to look like before you get started. And before I get started, I'm going to spray my brush a little bit to help that paint go on smoother and prevent some brush strokes. This is my favorite light gray to use because it's kind of, I would say, a chameleon color. It looks different in all sorts of lighting. As you can see, it's pretty bright out here. It almost looks white, but this is a light gray with a neutral undertone. In some lighting, it almost looks blue. Other lighting, it looks a little bit more beige. So it definitely works in a lot of spaces for whatever you're looking for. You can see how smooth it is going on. That is for a couple reasons. One, I am using a high quality synthetic brush. Synthetic brush is gonna help with brush strokes and even coverage. And I'm keeping my brush damp as I go along to prevent drag and texture. Now moving on to the front of the piece, just showing you what that looks like. Now moving on to the drawers, I'm going to be painting starting with the edges first, cap those off and then I will paint the middle section and smooth that out. After letting the paint dry, I'm coming back with my 220 grit sandpaper on a sandy block to smooth out any texture or brush strokes before I go ahead and do my second coat of paint. Then I'm removing that dust with a rag and then I'll follow with the tack cloth to get any remaining dust. I do not want that in my paint. Now continuing on with that second coat, just repeating that process. I'm applying to the edges first and then I will apply it to the middle and then smooth that out. I just love how much this paint color has completely changed the way this nightstand looks. Yes, I'm not all the way done and the hardware isn't on and everything, but you can just see how much newer it looks, how much more fresh it looks with this gray color.
and I am spraying my brush as I go along to keep the paint from dragging and to smooth out as I go. Now continuing on the left side, just showing you what that looks like. I'm applying in long strokes and smoothing those out as I go along, making sure not to go over places I've already applied because they're already starting to dry down. So if you apply in one area and then go back to a previous area, that is going to add brush strokes. So you want to apply this quickly and work it minimally to prevent brush strokes and allow that paint to self-level. Now for this drawer here, I was feeling like the brush was dragging a little bit, so I'm actually spraying the piece itself before coming in with that second coat. This is also another way you can prevent brush strokes. It is a little bit easier than watering down the paint or spraying your brush. It just helps it go on a little bit smoother when you have that water to work over. After letting the paint dry for 24 hours, I'm going to be sealing it using Dixie Belle's clear coat and a satin finish. And I'll be applying it using my Zebra Chiseled Wedge Brush. I'm going to apply it on the sides first just to cap those off. And then I'll apply in the middle and smooth that out. You do want to work quickly on this because it does self-level, so if you're overworking this, it's not going to smooth out like it's supposed to and it's going to have more brush strokes. Now onto the left side here, just repeating that process again, applying it quickly and not overworking it. I do recommend using a flat synthetic brush like this one because it is easier to smooth out and it's easier to get straight lines when you're applying it. And then for the drawers, just showing you what that looks like. I'm applying on the sides first and then I'm gonna smooth out the center. Now I'm gonna seal the drawers using Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter in the scent Orange Grove. Here's what it looks like. And I'm gonna be using this bare chalk brush to apply it. When you're doing this kind of thing on wood drawers, I do recommend really getting it into that wood. You don't want this wax just to be sitting on top. You do wanna work it in and seal in that wood so work it in and brush it in a little bit more than you think you need to. Thank you. 
Make sure to allow this to soak in for at least 12 hours and then come back with a cloth and remove any excess that didn't absorb into the wood. Now that it's all complete, just want to remind you what we started with. And here's how it looks now. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this makeover today. I hope you enjoyed it. I personally love how this one turned out. I love how modern and chic it is. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think and check out some of my other videos before you leave. And I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm gonna show you how to make trash. And it is now raining, even though it only says 1% chance of rain on the forecast today. So I'm Ah, <sighs> that's so annoying. Come on, focus. Hello.